Welcome, mindset, to this, to this awesome live session, Learn Extra Live. I hope you guys are ready for this week, you know, having a lot of fun. Actually, I'm excited particularly for this lesson. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, science is always fun. Ha! <laughs> so, oh, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what's happening today. We do worry about that. It's okay. <laughs> today, we're actually selling electric circuits, which happens to be one of my favorite sections. I get very excited. My kids just smile and nod at me at my own school. <laughs> and what we're doing today, guys, is we're really just looking at the introduction. We're going to do some calculations that are really important. And then it's actually a two-part session that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Next week, we're going to do some experiments and look at circuits in parallel and series. So that's also going to be quite exciting. Right. But oh. today, it's just the beginnings, just the basics, and I think it's going to be cool. All right. Yep. Awesome. So, Tracy, while mm. you make your way Excellent. to the board, Thank you. I'm going to tell these guys to make sure you mm -hmm. get at me. Make sure you send your, best, your messages and all your questions to www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And remember, guys, I always tell you, if you don't ask the questions, I can't help you. And if I can't help you, then, hey, I can't help you. And guys, by the way, ha ha, I'm still giving away a calculator and a labeler. So guys, make sure you get those questions in the best post just to go with one of these. And guys, 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 cannot tell you enough. Keep chatting on the page. Use it. Use it. It's a platform for you. And guys, it's so, so, so important. So as I always say, Notepads, pens, make notes, and get ready for the session. Tracy, we're good to go? Excellent, absolutely. Ready, take it away. Here we go. Guys, seriously, I want that calculator and the label. I'm yeah, just saying I'm so jealous. Handy. It's but so it's handy. okay. <laughs> anyway, okay, so guys, what I've got, and what we're going to look at today is I'm going to show you different parts of the electric circuit because it's really important that you understand how the circuit's made up. I know you've done it in grade 10, I know, I know you've done it in grade 8 and 9, but we're going to do the different parts, and I'm really hoping most of you have seen it. This is a basic circuit board that I have in front of me, okay, and with a whole bunch of components, we haven't set it up because I don't want to connect to anything, and we're going to look at different components, how we represent them on a circuit diagram, because when we do experiments and stuff, if you're anything like me, I can't draw to save my life, okay, there's a reason why I never took art, and I could never draw this as an actual diagram because, well, I'm not really sure what it would look like, but not this. This Probably a lot of you have seen these types of circuit boards. The new ones don't have these big battery holders in the middle or the box actually welded on it. So it's got a little bit more space and they're actually more plastic orientated. But some of you might not have those yet. It doesn't actually matter. It's the same thing. So what we're going to do is I've actually made a table. So just in case you guys haven't seen these before and there's a whole bunch of things. And by the components, I'm going to show you what we mean and then we're going to see how we draw them. Now the first one is your connector, which is basically this little thing over here. Okay, it's just a little connector. It's a piece of wire. It's a conductor. We also use connectors that are um, actual wires that are insulated that has crocodile clips at the end. We're not too worried about those right now. And a connector, easiest out of all the things for us to draw. We like connectors. They are literally just straight lines. And when we look at circuit diagrams and we just, we actually describe an experiment, we don't often include how many connectors we need because that's implied in the question. Okay, the next one is a cell. Now this is a small cell. Most of you at school won't be using the pen lights, you won't be using, du you won't be using double A's, you'll be, um, sorry, triple A's, you'll be using double A's, you'll use the bigger ones, not because the voltage is different, since they last a little longer and they have to be put in to the circuits for longer. And remember, they have a positive and negative, so when I draw the cell, we draw it so I have a positive end and a negative end. And an easy way to remember which is which is the positive end, the longer part, which means I can take it and cut it in half and make a plus sign out of it. And the negative end is the small little one. This is a cell. Please, it's very important, grade tens. In normal everyday life, I will call this a battery. You'll say, we want to go buy batteries, so this is a battery. It's one little battery. But in science, this is a cell. I need one or more put together, I need two or more put together, sorry, to make a battery. But what if I don't know how many cells are in the battery? Because sometimes we don't know. Sometimes there could be one cell, two cells, four cells, 700 cells. We don't want to be drawing all the little lines. So we can represent that this way. And then we draw a dashed line. And that means that I have seven cells, 12 cells, whatever the case may be. Could even just be two cells. It doesn't matter, but they're they connected. At grade 10 level, you're only going to connect them in series, so we're only going to connect them like this because it's going to make your lives easier. We'll talk about 
parallel collect connections later. The next thing we're going to use quite often is a light bulb. Now, for your experiments, which is like the one we're going to do next week, a light bulb's not very useful. We're going to talk about Ohm's law, and your light bulb's a very special little resistor. We like using it at school level because it lights up, and it gives an indication of current strength, and I'm pretty sure that in grade 8 or 9, if you did the experiments with your light bulb, you would have described the current strength as the brightness of the bulb. So if it well, it glowed very, very brightly, then it was a strong current. If it was very, very dim, then it's a, sh then it's a small current. And that's okay for grade 8 and 9 because it's qualitative, okay? Um, so it's just a description. But now we're getting into grade 10 from 9 to grade 12. Qualitative doesn't help us very much. We want to do quantitative descriptions, which means we need numbers. And this little light bulb doesn't obey Ohm's law. So it's what we call non-ohmic. So we would rather use these little resistors. I'm just going to put this down quickly. Um, these little resistors, if any of you, particularly the boys, I'm going to say, though I'm sure there's girls out there that have done this, who are very, um, who are interested in, in engineering and that sort of thing, these are the resistors you find inside circuit boards. So if we had to open up the back of this TV, heaven forbid, because I'd probably get fired, okay, <laughs> and we quite like this job, so we're not going to yeah, do that no, anytime soon. That but <laughs> open up any electronic e piece of equipment, and if you are going to do this at home, make sure it's something you're not using anymore and it's not plugged in. In fact, don't do it at home. Rather go to school and do it and ask your teacher to help you. Um, you will see these, but generally they bent like this, okay, and then they weld it onto your circuit boards, and they come in different sizes. These are ohmic conductors. They have um, little lines on them. It's a color code, which tells you what the resistance on this is, okay? At school, in our circuit boards in my, in my school laboratory, we don't have them looking like this. They actually come in, they're actually little squares that have their resistance and their power written on them, which makes it easier. But if you know the color code, you can work this out. These are much more useful to us, okay? How do we represent them? Now, first of all, representing a light bulb is nice and easy. I'm sure most of you have done this forever with a cross in it. And then for representing a resistor, it's just a square box. And that's quite nice because it looks very similar to what this is. It's a square box. Please be careful, great tens. The, if you look at old, old exam papers, the nice thing is in your curriculum, probably resistors, electricity is the one thing that's changed the least over the last 10, 15 years. So if you get old of old exam books and that sort of thing and you look at the diagrams, they'll show you, they'll put in resistors that are drawn like that. That's no longer the symbol, but it means a resistor. So please don't get bent out of shape. It's actually a very useful tool to go back and look at those old exam papers because they, it hasn't changed much, much. Just be careful, though, if you're looking at ones that have the old high-grade centigrade in them, high-grade were very, very difficult. Okay, and at grade 10 level, you should probably be able to, to answer the standard-grade type questions, not the high-grade just yet. Then... Your switches, and I actually didn't have one with me, open and close switches are very important because we need to know if there's a current flowing. So a switch is just a way for us to show in the connection. So, oh, and my switch is getting a whole bunch of extra things in it. So here's my switch. An open switch, don't forget the little dots on the side, is just that, it's open. Okay, it's like switching off a light bulb. When I switch off the light bulb at home, when you switch off the lights, it's because you've opened the switch. A closed switch looks like that. Okay, it looks almost like a con connector, except we've put the switches in. Okay, I just want to show you quickly. Hopefully you saw these in grade 8 and 9. These are actually very useful little tools. These are also special types of resistors. Um, what they actually do is they different types of resistance wire. May, they don't actually tell me what some of them are. This one's copper wire. But these are really nice because with these wires, depending on how I connect it with the crocodile clips, I can change the length of the wire. But they're all different thicknesses, which is actually really important because in grade 9, you would have learned that the thickness of the wire plays a part in resistance and so does the length so we would use these now the thing with this though is these get very hot very very quickly so we don't want to use them a lot so it's not a good idea then the last thing i'm going to look at is an ammeter and voltmeter i just need to get this quickly now what i have here is this is an, a, a multimeter these are nice because these are nice and accurate i'm going to show you a picture of the ones you probably have in your classroom the thing about these little 
things which I personally like is I can change what it is. If I change its, if I dial it over here and it's going to give me a reading of launch at the moment because it's not connected to anything, this is c a direct current voltmeter. Okay? If I change it to this, it's an alternating current voltmeter, which we're not going to worry about because we don't use alternating current at this point. Then we have, this becomes an ammeter, which is great. And then it has a really nice function, which we don't use at school because that would be cheating at this point. Is over here, it's an ohm meter. It actually can tell you the value of a resistance, what its resistance is. So we could work it out. But you know, there's other ways to do that, so we're not going to worry about it. But the thing about these, because they're electronic, we need to learn to switch them off. Otherwise, we waste the battery, and the battery is really difficult to change. So how do we represent an ammeter? Well, it's also with a circle and an A, which means ammeter, and a voltmeter circle with a V. Okay, please be careful, and I'm sure you just forget because we get a little lazy or we just don't always remember, but it has to be circles, we don't represent them as squares. We're now going to talk about current, and we're going to talk about potential difference. We're going to talk about how we connect an ammeter and voltmeter, what their function is, and what they read. And we've got to be careful with how we represent them. So the first thing we're going to do is look at potential difference. Now, potential difference is defined, I'm going to put that down, as the work done per unit charge. So we're looking at, so let's do this, work done, okay, per unit charge. Guys, that refers to energy. This is so important. I think it's such a hard concept for you guys, and trust me, I have grade 11s and grade 12s who still struggle with this. Potential difference, work refers to how much energy is being done. Okay, so when I talk about the potential difference across a resistor or the potential difference across a battery or a cell, I'm talking about either the amount of energy, because that's work, going to be given to the charge as it goes through the cell or the amount of energy that's going to be taken away from the charge as it goes through the resistor. Okay, and it's per unit charge, which means we've got to look at how we calculate it. Now, it's measured in volts, okay, and volts basically means joules per coulomb. When we look at the equation, V equals W over Q, Q, V is your potential difference. Now, please remember grade 11, grade 10s, sorry. Potential difference is often referred to as voltage in a question. And this is probably the nicest one out of all your units, because out of all your units and symbols, because the symbol for its unit is V. So the symbol for voltage is V, the symbol for its units is V, which is nice, okay? And then W is work, also known as energy, and that's measured in joules, and Q is charge, which is measured in coulombs, which is C, okay? Guys, V equals W over Q will not be on your information sheet. This is something you need to learn, okay? Now, when we look at potential difference across the battery, when it's not in a complete circuit, so if I took my battery here, sorry, my connections are, and I put my voltmeter over it, okay, that gives me EMF. EMF is the potential difference across the terminal of the battery that is not in a complete circuit. Essentially, what EMF means, grade, not grade 10s, is EMF is the total amount of energy I can give to the electrons as they go through the, s the cell, okay? That energy, that total is what gets used up by the, s by the circuit as it goes along. So we look and we go, well, here we have an old style traditional voltmeter, which is very likely the ones you have in your labs, okay? And we need to now look at how we connect a voltmeter. Remember, voltmeters are connected in parallel, so if I'm connecting the voltmeter over a cell, oh, sorry, to can measure its EMF, we would connect it like that, okay? If the cell is connected into a circuit, okay, so now we want to look at measuring, say, the voltage over a resistor. So we have it in a circuit, 
it's a complete circuit, so we know current will flow. Ooh, it's a complete circuit, so let's make sure. That's not a complete circuit. That's terrible. Okay, you would draw these with um, rulers, please, so it's nice and neat. I would connect it in parallel, okay? It's got to be connected so there's a path difference because it's very important. A voltmeter has a very, 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 very high resistance, okay? Very little, if any of the current will go through it. If we connect it in series, no current will go through the circuit. We'll stop the circuit from moving, so that's a bit stupid. Okay, this one is measuring EMF at this point, okay? We don't need to worry at grade 10 about a concept called internal resistance, which is quite nice because internal resistance affects the battery, but we could still have a voltmeter over here, okay? Now, grade 10s, it's really important that you remember that when we look at these, that we are careful about numbering and naming and all sorts of things because we have lots of voltmeters, and in a circuit, if we say name that as V, maybe I should, V1, there we go, and that as V2, that's how I must use it when I do my calculations, okay? That's really, really, really important. All right, and once again, I'm just going to remind you that a voltmeter symbol is a V with a circle around it, okay? So, so what I think we need to do, Ty, is I have a couple of problems, but I think we're going to take a small break mm -hmm. now, and then I'll do the problems after the break. All right, awesome. Yeah. So, guys, make sure you stick around. Make sure you just go grab a little bit of snack. Go grab something to eat. Always carry something with you just so you can nibble on while you're working. Gives you a little bit of energy. But make sure, make sure, make sure you're back after the break. But for now, we'll see you after this. Welcome back, Mindset, to this Learn Extra Live session. I just want to send a quick shout-out to Liberty. Thank yeah. you for sponsoring. And guys, I hope you followed my instructions and got your notes, pads, pens out, and you got yourself a little snack, a little something to nibble on, so you don't have to get distracted, so you can just keep your brain fed while you're, while you're paying attention and working on this. So guys, I hope you're ready for this next session, because it's really important, and you need to pay attention. Pay attention. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got me? All right, cool, cool, cool. So... Tracy, are we good to go? We are good to go. Let's do this. Alrighty. Okay. Awesome. So I'm Take just <laughs> getting my answers. Oh, my answers have decided to go on holiday, so it's okay. We're going to have to do this with a calculator, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be fun. It's okay. I did have the answers. I know it looks like I'm unprepared, but I'm not. <laughs> so we're just going to have to see how good my, my maths is or not, mm -hmm. as the case may be. We'll find a calculator in a second. Anyway, so we're going to do some problems. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge for the mindsetters out there. Okay. And the first thing we're going to look at, so these are typical type of questions you're going to get at this point. It says, calculate the potential difference. Now, guys, what I like to do is write a list. So potential difference means I need to calculate the voltage across a light bulb when it does 100 joules of work when 15 coulombs of charge moves through the light bulb. So we go, that's okay. Now guys, I know a big problem is we tend to go, mm, I don't actually know which equation to use. Well, this is simple enough. I know I'm going to use voltage. So V equals W divided by Q. Now, grade 10s, this is nice and easy because I'm not having to manipulate the equation. Please be careful here because I know what happens is you tend to go, oh, I don't want to have to manipulate once the numbers are in. And I'm not really sure where this comes from. It might be that in maths you get taught that you must first manipulate the equation, then do your substitution. I don't know. But in science, okay, and this is really important because this is how to guarantee your marks, write the equation as you know it, which is V equals W over Q. Then write in what you're given. In this case... It's 100 divided by 15. This equation would be three marks in, at a test or an exam. You've already got two out of three. So if you're like me and haven't got a calculator on hand, um, but I have somebody in my ear who's told me they know what it is, but I'm just going to double check anyway because not that I don't believe him. So I'm just going <laughs> to divide quickly. I know we've got a calculator somewhere on here. So, oh, sorry, 6,67.
you've always got to believe the little voices in your head. It's very important. Just just mm, so always, you know. Always yeah, it's very important. Voices in six comma <laughs> six seven. <laughs> it's actually six comma six 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 recurring. We never leave the recurring. Okay. Also, great teens, this is very important. You tend to, because your calculators have that beautiful math display, natural display on it, you leave it in math display, which leaves you with an answer that is a fraction. Please do not do that. That is not the answer. We never work with fractions in science. Okay, never, never, never. So, let's look at another one. Now they say, how much energy, energy means work, W. Is transferred when 35 joule, uh, sorry, coulombs of charge moves through a resistor with a potential difference. Come now, oh, my pen. With a potential difference of 12 volts. Now, once again, start with what we know. V equals W divided by Q. So now we know that we have 12. W is what I'm looking for. Q is 35. So I'm not looking for Q. Now we do a little bit of manipulation. I'm hoping your math is okay here. So W is going to be 12 times 35. And this I definitely can't do in my head. We'll find our nice calculator just now. So this is 420 measured in joules because it's energy. Okay, we're okay with that? All right, now, then a little bit of voltage questions. Now we need to move on to current because current is really important for us. Definition of current, it's the rate at which charge, let's actually do it nice and cut, charges move past a point in a circuit. Grade tens. Please, 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 please. Do not learn that electric current is the flow of electrons. It's another way we put it, it's the flow of charge. It's the rate it's the rate of flow of charge. Do not learn it as just electrons simply because yes, in a circuit like we use them at school, outside the cell, outside the battery, it is the little electrons that are running around, but Inside the battery, there's a complex chemical reaction taking place, which you are going to learn about in grade 11 and 12. Okay? Inside that chemical reaction, we have ions moving, positive ions and negative ions. We have charge moving, not electrons. So please be careful with that. The unit is ampere. Please, grade 10s, I cannot tell you this enough. You may not ever abbreviate this to, maybe I should write nicely for you, to amp or amps, because that's not correct. That is an English abbreviation, that is not a science abbreviation, and particularly in the end of grade 12, you will get naught for that as a unit, because it's not correct, it's not written correctly. So, the way we calculate current is I equals Q over T, where I is current, measured in amperes, capital A, okay, Q is current, measured in coulombs, and T is, thank you, I am, you know what, not having a great day because Q actually is charge. Well, someone's paying attention. It's always important to pay attention. attention. Always, always. <laughs> it's very important, and I'm very glad my director is at this point in time, <laughs> because Ty didn't correct me, so he's not. I, I was talking to the mic. He's, oh. he's trying to multitask. Okay? I'm exactly, I'm in the lesson and talking to you guys. So you see, now, this gives my kids a good... It's why they can't be on their phones while I'm teaching. Exactly. Don't, don't do you it. You see, it's don't why you can't do it. Do it. <laughs> anyway, moving on to okay, tell your flock. <laughs> so, I equals Q over T. Sometimes you'll see it as delta T, that's not a huge thing, okay? So how do we measure current? With an ammeter, this is the type of ammeter you probably have in your classroom. Ammeter symbol, oh man, is an A. 
please be careful, grade 10s, because in a circuit diagram, we would very possibly say call this I1 and say to you calculate the current on I1 and you will then say well then I A1 has a current whatever. You may not use that as a symbol for current because A isn't the symbol for current. I is the symbol for current. If I want to represent the reading on ammeter A1 I would say I one. Please be careful. I know it's tempting because like, well, that's what they wanted. Of course, it's what they wanted, but that doesn't mean that's where you have to write. So very, very careful here. When we connect an ammeter into a circuit, it's always connected in series. So in terms of a typical circuit cell, let's put a... Okay, there we go. Connected in series, taking all the current. We need an ammeter to read all the current, to take everything. Because what it's doing, okay, it's like being a little marshal at a robot. I'm sure you've seen these people who stand at robots and all they do is count cars. I'm not really sure why they do it, but they do, they count cars. So it's like being a little marshal at a robot with a little clipboard and counting the cars that go past. That's what an ammeter does. It sits there and it counts as the little electrons go past it in a certain time period, and that's where it gives you the reading. Okay, so let's look at a problem. Problem one, we need to calculate the amount of charge that moves past us is equal to 72 coulombs, so Q equals 72 coulombs in a circuit in five seconds, so time is five seconds, what is the current? So now we want I, okay? So we go, okay, well, we're definitely not going to use V equals W over Q, even though we have Q in the equation, because we don't have W and we don't have V, so we need to use I. So I equals Q over T, where Q is 72, T is 5, and let's just work... There we go. I'm going to believe the voice in my head. It's 14,4 amps. Okay, 14,4 amps. You'll get that. Guys, please be careful here as well, grade 10s. Do not expect to get necessarily a nice round answer. Because you won't, because that's not how the way circuits work in reality. Let's do another one. How long does it take? How long? Time. They want to know time. For 105 coulombs, 105 coulombs, to move past a point in a circuit, if the current is 2 amps. Okay? So we know we need to use I equals... Q over T, where I is 2, Q is 105, we want T. So I'm going to show you the maths. You wouldn't need to do this step necessarily, grade 10s. Okay, so we have 102 divided by, sorry, 105 divided by 2, and we get 52,5 seconds. Grade 10s, please, and I see this all the time. The SI unit for time is seconds. Do not convert that time into minutes or hours or days or years, heaven forbid, because that would be a ridiculous number here, unless you are asked to do so. I see it all the time with a lot of stuff, particularly when it comes to something like time, is you tend to want to convert it. I'm not really sure why, but here, unless I say to you, well, how long does it take in minutes, or how long does it take in days, or anything like that, unless it's actually said to you, you have to keep it in seconds. Be very, very careful, okay? So are you guys ready for another problem? Actually, no, that was the next one more little concept to do, resistance. You guys really don't like resistance. What is resistance defined as? Resistance slows down the flow of charge in a circuit. Resistance is what makes it difficult for current to move through, okay? And it's measured in 
ohms, and it's the capital omega sign in the Greek alphabet. Looks a little bit like a hat. And we get the equation R equals V over I, where resistance is actually the relationship between voltage and current over a resistor. Ohm's law, it's a nice thing to prove. It's actually a really nice practice to do in the classroom if it works nicely for you. And basically what it says to us is that my resistance is directly proportional to the voltage, which t says to me, so I'm going to do this here, it's directly proportional, uh, no, I wanted that, directly proportional, sorry, directly proportional to the current. I'm, I'm going the wrong way around here. This is what I'm saying to you. I'll get to this definition in a second. Resistance is directly proportional to voltage, potential difference. So in other words, if the resistance gets bigger, the voltage over that resistance gets bigger. Okay? Because here, a voltmeter over a resistor is measuring, essentially, how much energy the little electrons are losing as they go through the resistor. So if it's harder to get through, they lose more energy, so that value goes up. All right? Think about it as where if you running, okay, it's not my favorite thing to do in the world, but you're running, and you go from running on the road, and then all of a sudden there's a mud pit in the middle of the road, okay? But you want to keep up the same amount of, in you want to keep the same speed, it uses so much more energy because it's really difficult to run through the mud, okay? Or if you're on the beach, those of you who live close to the beach, I'm sure you know this, that running on that nice hard sand where the waves have just come up is really nice, but then you get onto that soft sand and man it takes so much energy because it's really hard okay so if we increase the resistance the voltage increases with it which means the current decreases because it gets harder for the electrons to move through so it takes so we get less electrons moving through per second because it's taking them so much time to get through Okay, and that is Ohm's law, and we're going to read it. It says, the potential difference across the resistor is directly proportional to the current through the resistor, provided the temperature of the resistor remains constant. Guys, this temperature concept is very important. The actual control. Whenever you do an experiment, you have to have controls, and when we do Ohm's law, temperature is your control. It has to be at a specific temperature. The resistance, and you've done this before, resistance changes with temperature, and in grade nine, you would have learned that the hotter it is, the greater its resistance, the colder it is, the less its resistance, until you come to semiconductors, which you'll do next year in grade 11. All right, so our equation, which is really important for us, R means resistance, and resistance is measured in ohms, which is a little bit like a funny Mexican hat, I suppose. V is potential difference, or voltage, which we also know is measured in volts. And I is current measured in amperes. Okay, nice and easy. R equals V over I. This equation, when we start to do circuits, is going to be your best friend, grade teens. You are going to use this equation over and over and over again. It's the one equation, even though it's on your information sheets, I'm hoping you never, ever, ever have to look up. But I want to show you something. Before you start using this equation, learn to use subscripts. So learn, for example, that say I'm looking at resistance R1 and I'm using V1 over I1 in a circuit. This little one is a name, okay? So generically, I would say Ty is a boy, I'm a girl, okay? But if I referred to all boys as boy, they would get very confused. Yes. Because if we just called everyone boy, well... Yes, they wouldn't know who we're talking to. If we called everyone girl, no one would know who we're talking to. Exactly. So, we, so we give Ty a name. We call him Ty. So he's the boy called Ty. Okay, I'm the girl called Tracy. So here's my resistance called resistance 1. And this is my voltmeter called voltmeter 1. Okay, so we're giving it a name so that when I refer to it in calculations, I know exactly which one I'm talking about. A lot of the times, you're going to have to work something out and then use it again later on. And if everything is just called R or if everything is just called V, 
How am I going to know which one I'm talking about? And then I'm going to start getting confused. And being confused is bad, as far as I'm concerned. We don't like being confused, all right? So remember that you don't have to do it. Really, you don't. But it's a good way not to get confused, OK? And I think, Ty, we will take a small break there, and then I'll do some calculations with this after the break. All right, awesome. Yep. So guys, you know the drill. Make sure you stick around. And guys, 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 keep chatting for me on the page. Keep sending your questions. If you're lost anywhere, let me know so I can get those questions to Tracy so Tracy can make sure that you can, so make sure that you guys can get help. And guys, again, 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 I still have a calculator giveaway and a labeler. So do best and just put on your, your questions on the page and we'll, we'll see you after this break. Peace. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you're ready for another session. I hope you're nice and get a break, like just, <laughs> just a little bit of a break, you know, just like your circuits are now relinked together. Get it? Nice get circuit sign. I like it. Well done. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. So, Tracy's going to take over from me and she's going to do the rest of the lesson. So, pay attention. Pens, pads, write notes. All right? Tracy, take it away. Cool. Well, actually, Ty, you're not completely incorrect because actually your brain is one big circuit. Yeah. So, we just need to get all the pathways sorted. Totally Sometimes I don't up. think. The connection's on. <laughs> yeah. Or like I tell my kids, the lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> okay. That's, but, you know, that's just me. Mm. Anyway, so let's do a couple of calculations with R equals V over I, and hopefully then we'll go to some Facebook questions. So I'm quite excited. Now, the current through A resistor is 2 amps. So they're telling me we have a current of 2 amps, and the, they want me to calculate the resistance. So they want R when the potential difference across the resistors is 25 volts, okay? Now, just a quick one here, grade, grade tens. When it comes to current and voltage, you've obviously got to be really careful about the way you deal with circuits and stuff because you might go, oh, school circuits, can't get hurt, we're not dealing with anything that exciting. And generally speaking, at school, the current is quite low, so you're not actually really going to get hurt. But it, you've still got to be making sure you don't touch circuits with red hands and you don't just touch bare wires and all of those things which you should know anyway from a logic point of view. But what you need to understand, it's not the voltage that will kill you when you get, su get, get struck, it's actually the current. And in fact, under the right circumstances, a current as low as one ampere can kill you. So be careful, all right? This potentially could kill us. So we need to be careful when it comes to circuits. And I'm particularly scared of getting an electric shock because if it doesn't kill you, it maims you and it's not pretty. All right, so R equals V, oh, and apparently I can't write either today. <laughs> sure, V over I, where V is 25, I is 2. I'm really hoping you guys can do this in your heads. And we get 12 and a half Ohms. Do not forget the units, grade tens. I'm going to emphasize this over and over again because if you leave out the units, even if you get the 12 and a half right, you don't get any marks for your answer because th that's just the way it works. Okay, let's do another one. Now they say to you the potential difference across the resistor is of 12 ohms, so they want, so they, oh, sorry, 15 ohms. They tell you the potential difference is. 12 volts, and now they want the current. They want I. So R equals V over I. Let's make it so we can write. So V is, well, R is 15, V is 12, and we want current. You don't need to do the next step, but I suggest it because I know for ma from a mass point of view, it just makes our lives a little easier. It's 12 over 15, so let's just quickly calculate it because now I have our proper calculator divided by 15, and we get 4 over 5, and this is what I was telling you about grade 9s, um, sorry, grade 10s. Do not leave it as 4 over 5, even though in this case this is what the calculator gave me because it's on mass display, we do not accept that as our answer because it's just a simplified version of the fraction. So we're going to simplify it. We change it. It actually is 0.8, so it's 0.8 amps. Great tens, when it comes to your resistances, 
don't worry if you get a resistance that's a fraction because it's often worked out deliberately so that when you work out your total resistance in your circuit or anything like that, it actually comes to a whole number. So don't stress about it. You're going to get fractions. You're going to get decimals. Okay? You guys all okay with that? Ty, do we have any questions? So far, we have a couple. Okay. I don't know, do you want to just finish off the section? Or? I'm finished with the calculations. I mean, I have one okay. more, but it's a theory question. But I'd like to get to the Facebook questions. Yes. I have one from Eugen. Yes. Um, he's basically wanting to find out um, what are the factors that influence resistance? Excellent question. There's four factors. One is the type of material. And, of course, we can't do anything about that. So, for example... Copper is a very good resistor, whereas something like tungsten isn't such a good resistor, but that's just the way it is. It's the way the metallic bond is. The second thing is the temperature. Okay, so with temperature, if it's too hot, if the hotter it gets, the more the resistance of the, the conductor becomes. So if we increase temperature, we increase resistance all the other way around. The next one is the length of the resistor. And this is the last one because what this means is the longer the resistor is, the greater its resistance, or the other way around. If we make it short, it's got a small resistance. And the last one is the thickness or the diameter of the resistor. And this is, this is the one that works the other way around. The thicker it is, the smaller its resistance. And it's like going through a gate. Think about if you've ever had to leave the stadium after a soccer match, mm -hmm. and there's just millions of people to get out, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you go through those little turnstiles, when only one person can go at a time, it takes forever. But if they had to just open the gate so it's a wide gate and more people could get through at a time, it would go quicker. It's the same concept, okay? So the thicker the wire, the less its resistance. Thinner the wire, the more its resistance. And those are the four factors we deal with. These three... We can change. We have complete control over. Cannot change what happens with the type of material. Okay, I hope that, that summarizes mm. for him. Brilliant. That's awesome. Yes. And then we have another one from Sinky. She, this is more mm. like help-wise. Yes. She's saying, I still have a problem calculating resistance. And most, and most how do you know what the question requires? Okay, <laughs> if you do... No, no, I know what she's trying to say. I understand. <laughs> I get that. Okay, I think I speak teenage now. I'm a yeah. teacher. Okay. I'm speaking a little bit of English there. Yeah. <laughs> it was Sinky, hey? Yeah. T sinky, the way, d if you follow what I did, okay, so if you look at the way, like on this question, where what I did was I circled, highlight, underline the information that's given to you in the question, and then I write a list. So over here, I've written a list of, let's do it. Uh, not one of those here. Here's my list. Okay? You don't have to do this, but by writing a list, I can now look and go, well, the, we've, we've dealt with three equations today. R equals V over I, V equals W over Q, and I equals Q over T. From my list, I can see that the only equation I can possibly use is R equals V over I. Then it becomes a lot easier because straight from my list, after I've written the equation, I just substitute in what I know. Then it becomes a math problem. Okay? So underline or highlight the information you're given, write a list, and then you'll know which equation to work. And it comes from practice, sweet, sweetie. It's, uh, it's something that the more you practice, the better you get at. There's no shortcut to this one, I'm afraid. It's just about doing it the long way around. And I know sometimes, because you're teenagers, and my learners do, do exactly the same, you don't want to write down this, because you go, oh, this takes time. You've got the time in your tests and exams. I promise you have enough time to do that. And rather take the time and do it and get the marks than try and take shortcuts and lose the marks because you made a silly mistake. Okay. Hope that helps. Mm. I yes. think that should. Yes. Anyway. Do you have another one? Do you, yes. Let's have another one. Okay. Um, Morape, do you want it to find out? Okay. This one's more of a, like a c actual calculations okay, one. Okay. Cool. So this one's a nice fun one. Let me. Um, yeah. So he wanted to, f I'm hoping it's a he, there's, there's a guy on the, <laughs> on the, on the, the picture, okay, <laughs> so yes. I'm just assuming 95 electrons move past a fixed point in a circuit in one-tenth of a second. Okay. What is the current in the, sec in the circuit? All right. Sure, you went for the tough one, eh? Yeah, so you really went for the jugular. Just, they right? they <laughs> wanted to do the hard one. So 95 <laughs> electrons move past a point in a second in one-tenth of a second. second. Yes. Okay. So they said it's 0.1 seconds and we have 95 electrons now. They're using a little bit of quanti quantization of charge, which I didn't include into, into to 
today's lesson, but we did it with electrostatic, so it's fine. It's definitely the way we can do it, okay? Okay. They want, wanted how much current, eh? Yeah, they want to find out the current okay. in the so circuit. So in order to find current, I need to know charge. So the first thing we have to remember is you have learned an equation that says charge is number of electrons times the charge on an electron. Okay, so now they said to you, you read 95 electrons, so that's 95. On your information sheet, you'll be given the charge on an electron, which happens to be 1,6 times 10 to the minus 19, and I absolutely will need to use my calculator for this. So 95 times 1.6 to the exponent minus 19, and we get 1,52 times 10 to the minus. So 1,52 times 10 to the minus 17 coulombs. It's a very, very, very small charge, and that's okay. But they wanted current. So we remember that current is Q divided by T. So it's 1,52 times 10 to the minus 17. One-tenth of a second, which is 0,1 seconds. And just to show you, okay, I'm going to take my answer times by 0.1, and it becomes... If my pen were right, 1,52 times 10 to the minus 18 amps. So it's a little more complicated than we did earlier, but it's actually a really nice question. Thank you for sending it in. You're welcome, if you really wanted to, to actually include this part of the equation into the original, into I equals Q over T, but I would really do it as two parts because it makes it a bit easier. What makes this horrible is the, is the exponents, but actually... It's not so bad. Nice question. I like that. Awesome. Yes. Then we have another one from yes. Pleasure. This one's more theory. Okay. He wanted to find out, please explain what is meant by resistors in series and voltage divider. Okay. We're actually going to do that next week. Oh. Hold on to that question. Good question. I'm glad you asked me that. Okay. Just a reminder quickly that volt current uh, resistors in series sorry, means that we put our resistors in a circuit like this and then we look at the voltage over each of them, okay? So what we d we're actually going to do in a lot of detail next week. So if mm -hmm. we can hold that onto that question. Just hold on to that one. Hold on to hold that, that, that question. One. It's a great question because it's mm -hmm. one that I know you guys really, really struggle with. It's really, really important. But when we connect our resistors like this, in series, what, what does it do to the voltage? What does it do to the current? And what happens in parallel? We're going to do all of that. And in fact, I'm hoping to do a little bit of an experiment with them to actually show them. All so right. that'll be very cool. Awesome. And I think yeah. that's all I have for now. Okay. Well, we can go back to one of the questions I had just mm -hmm. to see. It's the type of questions you can get in terms of having to define stuff. Okay. The first thing is to define something like a resistor, and hopefully after everything we've done today, you guys can do this, and a resistor would be defined as a component, a physical component in a circuit, which resists the current in the circuit, okay, which, which resists the flow of charge. It's not resistance, I wanted resistor, okay? A coulomb would be defined as the unit of charge. That's what a coulomb is, units of charge. What is potential difference? Well, potential difference is the work done per unit charge. Okay? And we could carry on with these forever, so make sure you know your definitions. So grade tens, what have we actually done today? Let's just get to a blank page and we can summarize it quickly, okay? You've learned three really important equations. V equals W over Q, which we realized was potential difference divided by work, uh, equals work divided by charge. Okay, work measured in joules, cool, um, charge measured in coulombs, voltage in volts, measured by a voltmeter, which is connected in parallel. We also learned that I equals Q over T, where I is current, measured by an ammeter, which is connected in series. Okay, Q is charge, T is time, which is measured in seconds. And then we learnt R equals V over I, which is the Ohm's law equation. Okay, it's also known as Ohm's law, if we're going to do it as an equation. It's known as Ohm's law. It's actually named after a scientist. I just need to add this in quickly because he's one of my favourites. By name, it's named after a man called George Simon Ohm, for, and he lived in the 1700s. And what makes him so impressive, which is why I think this is incredible, is 
we can prove Ohm's law in 10 minutes flat. I can set up a circuit, prove it, done, we're off, and off we go. Mm -hmm. He took years and years and years. He was actually the son of a locksmith, and he learned a lot of hardware typing skills. What he had to do, what he had to do is he had to actually make all his own equipment, including making his own wires. We can go to the shop, buy 100 meters of copper wire, three millimeters thick, and it's all the same. He had to literally make all of that. Wow. And to measure voltage and current, he had to, it was very complicated. It was through electrolysis and all sorts of things. And yet he still came up with this and was accurate. I just Sounds find that like amazing. A schlep and a half. I think so. But I mean, that's dedication for <laughs> that you, is, okay? That is. And it took a long time for him to get recognized, which is why we named the Ohm after him, which is actually very cool. Fair. I think so. After <laughs> all of that, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and that was a rich man's game and for in the 1700s. You had, to know, you had to be in the know to get mm. recognized. So I think it's a good place to stop for me. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys were paying attention, writing notes. You know, I see you guys talking on the Facebook page, which always makes me happy because then I have a reason to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Guys, yes, I will post up the guys who won the, w the actual calculator, the labeler. So guys, make sure you stay tuned on the page and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell another friend to tell their friends to tell their friends to get on the page. Talk to us. Guys, the platform is for you. And guys, I cannot stress this enough before the calculator falls off the table. <laughs> <laughs> that make sure you guys chat to each other, help each other out. And for me, I'm going to say peace out and take care.